So when you scaffolded your REST API, you actually got a helper page right out of the box. So if you launch your web API and you look at the API path right here, you get into this page, a web API help page that actually displays all the different links that you can hit or URIs that you can hit in your REST API. You just have to put in the specific URI here to do it. So we're going to work with wishes right now. We have them all down here. Now, there's no documentation available yet. We'll look at that later, how you can add documentation to an actual page. But what we'll do is we know what's in here. Let's just click this guy and hopefully it'll show us what should be in the database. So I click it and it pops up hopefully with a list of what, what parameters you need to send, as uh, you should get, sorry, in the list of wishes. And also just an example of how it could look, right? We're going to get something a bit different, but this is kind of what it would look like. So how do we use this in Postman? Well, first of all, we have to go to Postman and make this a GET request. Remember, the four requests, you have to learn those. Um, if you want to read something, you'll use a GET request. And that's what we're going to focus on in this video, two types of GET. So we're going to start out with the simple GET request, just getting all the wishes in the database. So I jump into Postman, and here in this new tab right here, in the middle, we have the work area. And over to the left, we have like a history of all that has happened. And you can also go in and make collections of things you want to reuse later. But we're going to focus on a GET request right now. Now, what do we put in here? Well, we have to use the URL for our local host. And in my case, it's 1922 for the port. It could be different for yours. And then after that, you have to put in the remaining path, which is here. API wishes in this case. Now, I went into that page. Let me just jump back. You have API wishes or API wishes with an ID in your full REST API right here, right? So let me just open this one again. So I put in API wishes, like it says right here. I'll put that inside after the, the local host, right? And the port. And then I just keep the get request. Notice there's a get, a post, a put, and a delete that we will use. The other ones, let's worry about those later. There are other types of requests that we can send to our servers. So we select get request. We select this. A path right here and we do a send and now I should actually get back all my wishes if we made the REST API work and luckily we did. So here notice that I'm getting back the ID, the name of the wish and the created time. I don't get back any persons but I know the list should be there if I want it later. We can add the list later if we want to but right now I just want to test that we actually have access to a REST API and now we just showed we did. We just proved that we can pull out all the data from the REST API that's great stuff. Next time, let's try and actually manipulate the data uh, a bit. But first, I want to also show you that you have another GET request you can use. If you grab an ID right now, you can actually read a single wish just by adding it as the ID. So let's look at how I know that. Let's go back again to the full list of APIs. Notice there's another GET request here, but it says slash ID in the end. And that one is actually because we can add an ID if we want to. So I decide now to add a single ID. And right now I'm doing one because I want the bird back. I'm doing send and now I'm getting back only the single bird. So now you just use the two get requests for reading. So now you learned the two basic read functions in the CROT setup, which is two get requests, which is the get where we put in the wishes to get everything or the get where you actually put an ID to use a specific wish. Next, let's have a look at the create one. See you next time.